friends forever, that's what we are. Through the thick and the thin, we're friendship stars. We're banger main buddies from the days of old. We laugh, cry, and hug, friendship solid as gold. My soul could whatever started a year ago. We share our stories, and your stories were told. 80s, 90s, memories that give us glee. And on the block, party shows, and KOTB. Now our friendship circle has grown by far. Hashtag friends forever, that's what we all are. Boom. And if you don't know, now you know. My soul called whatever for life. Hashtag MSCW. Hashtag friends forever. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah. Today is the hashtag decade of Donnie. I wonder if it's like actually today. Today. Do you think it's today? I don't know. I mean... I feel like he wouldn't tweet it if it wasn't. Well, everybody else was tweeting it today. Oh, like somebody else came up with it and he just followed suit. Well, I, I think that that's, they looked back at the first tweet that he ever tweeted. Yeah. And I think it was today. Oh, okay. Well, then that makes sense that today would be the day. Yeah. Brooke and I were just talking about Twitter and how back in, I joined in like March, 2008. And I was like, Brooke, 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 you have to check this thing out. You have to check. It's called Twitter. And it's so cool. It's so cool. <laughs> and then I know how I became obsessed with it. <laughs> and I couldn't even like make it through a day because I was I had to read every tweet. I think when we had it, it was like at the time where like we couldn't check it on our phones. I think we had to actually like go on our computer and check it. No, I could definitely check it on my phone. You could? Like what I did got you it have? with an app. I had an iPhone something. Oh, yeah, because the iPhone came out in 2007. Yeah, so I had the... I, I didn't have the first iPhone, but I had, like, the next one. Okay, okay. So it was probably that one that I had. Yeah. I think it was the iPhone 3G. Hey. Hey. <laughs> um, I don't <clears> think <throat> I had... Because I... Remember, I got an iPhone late because I was a stay-at-home mom for a while, and then I just started working at the paper. Because I was, like, one of those, like... Somebody would say, hey, join this thing. And I'd say, okay. okay. I was like, me up. all about technology. Here's the question. Yeah. What was your first tweet? Okay, so I have to go back to Bangor Nikki. Because Bangor Nikki. I have my first I think tweet. that we talked about this already, did we? I don't know. Well, let's talk about it again. Well, I'm going to have to go way back. I tweeted on the first day, which was December 11th, 2008. Okay. One, two, three, four, five five six six times you, you tweet uh, the first time you tweeted six times the first day okay but my very 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 first tweet is very um interesting considering today's topic really yeah i'm excited it's a really it, it's really kind of kind of weird and creepy a little bit oh weird tell me <clears throat> so my first tweet was watching 90210 the original stop it and it rocks stop it right now yeah that's crazy and then i tweeted okay do you remember let me just first say do you remember back on facebook when you would post an update it it was almost like your name was starting a sentence yes it would say nikki is right and then you would say what you were doing like right then but that's right. really like what twitter is <clears throat> so my next tweet was it had my name mm -hmm. brooke Wonders if she knows anyone else on Twitter. Period. And then I replied to you yep. and said, I'm trying to get it. I feel old. <laughs> and then I was finally decorating for Christmas. And then I was bored with Twitter. <laughs> and then I was asking you, just begun what? And then when I went to bed, I put a bunch of Z's. That's amazing. And like you could see, I... I you were tweeting, you were bit. tweeting, because it was like, I can share with the world what I'm doing right now, like right. every aspect of my life. Why don't we do that now? Why don't we? I'm pretty boring. Because nobody wants to know what I do <laughs> in every aspect I of my do. life. I do. Just watching Instagram videos. Hey. Just watching YouTube. Yep. I miss Shane Dawson. Me too, and it's going to be a while before we get anything from him. Might you want to hear my first I tweet? I do. I do. Okay. I think I already talked about this, but um, it said, really having a hard time with action script. Blah. 
That was my very first tweet is Flash. Oh. And then my second tweet was, I'm not looking forward to going to work this evening. Hopefully the plane is early. Oh, my God. (laughs) Another one. I have no idea how to use this Twitter bar, obviously. Oh, I I know that I said this one. I know that I said this one on the podcast before. Because it's like. Like you said, like Nikki, you know, like, yeah, thinks that Pandora monster and broccoli soup make for a great late night homework session. <laughs> no, That's funny. So I like I tweeted all the time. I love Charleston shoes. Oh, my gosh. FYI, the guy from Ghost Hunters, his <clears throat> name is Steve Gonzalez, not Steve Williams. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. Oh, just like Pam, I'm failing Flash. Oh, <laughs> it is illegal to get a fish drunk in the state of Ohio. That's what you wrote? No, I was replying to fact type. That's what they wrote. And then I wrote, cross that off my bucket list then. Sheesh. <laughs> I wrote, um, Auburn wants for Christmas is an accordion. That's what she just told me. Aw, she was a little Bryn. Oh my gosh. I got her one too. Oh, my Bryn Bean is a potty superstar. Aww. Aww. Um, so I rewatched yesterday the Beak Jeans episode of Don't Trust the Bean. Yes, I love that episode. And I apparently tweeted about it back in 2013. You did? Well, you posted something. Did I? Po- no, you wrote, no, at Vander James, say it ain't so. And then I replied. And said, at least, at least these are not being liquidated, right? Right? With beak jeans. Because do you remember my favorite picture from that episode was him with, like, the Simba that was his head? <laughs> do you remember? I don't, but I, I, rem- I do remember. That was a long oh, time ago. At the sports arena with Brooke and Darcy. Come join us. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what? Why? This is so fun. I know. Weird. And you guys don't see what we're looking at, so no. sorry. No. It's just like, it's all our old tweets. But um, the reason why we're talking about this, like we said, it's, what's it called? What's the hashtag? Well, people are using Donnie, Donnie 10th Twitterversary, Donnie Twitterversary, but he used, oh, I didn't realize Donnie Wahlberg was not following me on Bangor Nikki. I very much doubt Donnie Wahlberg is following me. Uh, Decade of Donnie. But you know who follows me on my Brookie G? Who? Uh, Joey Lawrence. Does he really? Yeah. That's so cool. That was random. I think he went through like a thing where he just followed a bunch of people. I don't think I have anybody famous that follows Bangor Nikki. My verified followers. There's like a less than five. Mm-hmm. I have Joey Lawrence. Mm-hmm. The main campus. Hey. Which is University of Maine newspaper. Ben and Jerry's. Oh. <laughs> That's kind of random. That is random. And Bangor Daily News. <gasps> I have Danny Wood. Hey. Danny Wood follows me. Thank you, Danny. I have <clears throat> Electric Bodega. I don't follow what them, but that? they follow me. Um, I have And That's Why We Drink. They follow me. Hey. Because I used to talk to And That's Why We Drink when they were smaller. And they were they gave us really good podcasting advice. They were awesome. Yeah. They were like, told us what to get for setup and... They were awesome. They're still awesome. Now they're big time. Now they're big, big, big time. time podcasters. Yes. It's funny because I if you guys I made this account private because I really use this really for web dev stuff. So like if you guys follow me on Bang or Nikki, you're more than welcome to unfollow me because all I'm going to do is talk about web development. stuff. You just started following me. I did, because I just noticed that you were following me. I don't think I have any more verified people. Um, On that one. I don't think so. I'm looking. I feel like I have somebody, and it's going to be funny, and that's why I'm looking. (laughs) Well, the Jenny McCarthy show follows me. I was wrong. That's it. Thank you, Danny Wood, for following me way back in the day. He's the real deal. So um, did I say what it was, what today was? Yeah. Yeah. Decade of Donnie. Decade of Donnie. And it's trending right now. It's trending. That's exciting. Yeah. Donnie, you have made Twitter just a great place to be for us blockheads. Yeah. So you, it's so exciting. You Hashtag made it like BH so, love. Hashtag yes. national treasure. 
Hashtag we are all Donnie girls. Hashtag decade of Donnie. This girl says it all. She said, if someone told me 10 to 20 years ago that I would communicate with you over the internet, I would have thought they were crazy. For it's real. It's the truth. It's the truth. The truth. <clears throat> so that's that. I'll have to tweet out my thing. Decade of Donnie. So how was your week this week? My week? Yeah. It's all right. Mine was pretty good. The weather's been warmer. It's been. Which has been like. Good for me. But not so good for me. Not good for your floor. But So if you hear a noise in the background, it's because we've got a dehumidifier running because my whole basement's flooded like three times this week. And it's the first time. Like we had some we had some water last year, but it was very minimal. Right. Um, this year we have had a lot of water um, to the point where it's like covering my entire floor. And it's it's my office, which sucks. That does suck. Yeah. So <laughs> like I'm not laughing because it's funny. I'm laughing because it sucks. Yeah. Really. But we're we'll be building soon, so it means the snow's melting. So that means we can get started. Let's that get this party great. started. Let's get this party started. Right. Let's get this party started quickly. Right. Play that beat. Play that beat. Jam. That's what they say, right? I think so. Yeah. Oh, hey. <laughs> so um. So, and yeah, and it's been sunny and all that. I'm, right. I'm not looking forward to going away, but that is what it is. It's going to be so exciting. You're going to have so much fun. You will. I'm excited to be in Destination. Yeah. But I'm really excited for my vacation after that. That will be fun. Like, really excited for you that. You can just relax. Yep. Just sit by the beach all week if you um, want. I'm, that's what I'm going to do. That's, that's it. That's all I have to do all week is just, like, sit on the beach. So where will you be on your birthday? Because Brooke's birthday is on the 22nd. I will be in Budapest. Hey. Or Budapest. How are you? how they say it, but. How are you going to celebrate, do you think? I don't know, with a bunch of strangers. Hey, it'll be in fun. In a foreign country. I wonder if they'll bring you a cake or whatever. Maybe they celebrate birthdays differently in Budapest. I don't know. Maybe they will. Maybe they won't. How do they know it's my birthday? They don't. Unless I tell them. You'd be like, today is my birthday. I'm going to tell them. Yeah. Because it's my birthday. Right. You should tell them. You should wear a pin. I'll land there on my birthday. Like, I'll take off from here on the 21st and land on the 22nd. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Hopefully the plane makes it. It will. Stop uh. it. I'll be tracking your every move. Ugh. So. <clears throat> but I'm only there a week. Then I'll come home. And then I'm here less than two weeks. And then it's off to Mexico. Right. So we're going to actually have to record one more this week. We're going to have to figure that out somehow, somewhere, some okay. way. We'll figure it out. Yep. I'm not worried. So this week, yeah. if you're listening for the first time, actually, let's intro first. Let's do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is Brooke. And this is Nikki. And this is my so-called whatever. Welcome to our podcast. Welcome, guys. Thanks for joining us. Yes. If you're listening for the first time, we welcome you. This is our 80s and 90s episode. It is. On the other weeks, we'll do a block party, which is our Nukas in the Block episodes. Yes. And if you're noticing that, like, things are looking a little differently in iTunes and that, like, the episodes seem like they're not numbered anymore, iTunes, like, sent this message that said that we shouldn't <laughs> number, number the episodes. The episodes. So we decided that we absolutely needed to number the block party ones because we need to like differentiate between the right. two so that it was absolutely clear when someone was looking at our podcast, which one were block party episodes and which ones weren't. So we we stuck with the numbering of the block party episodes, but we went to a different naming convention for the rest of the episodes. Right. But you'll still see like what step number it is in the description. So. Right. And thank you for doing that, Nikki. Hey, no problem. I was looking at the list. I don't know if it was earlier today or yesterday of our of all of our episodes. And uh, yep, it's it, not, it looks different. It's not going to match up against the website, but right, we'll but figure that fine. out. I'll figure that out later. I'll do that within the next few weeks. So um, if it even needs to say la vie. OK, <laughs> I don't know if that's the right word. Hey, I don't even know what that means. It just it would be probably a good idea because they might be like. The only thing that's changed really are the block party episodes. So 
the regular episodes have stayed the same numbers. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. The block part. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, everything is still step. Blah, 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 yeah, blah, blah, exactly. Blah. Ah, exactly. ha, ha, ha. Yep. I get what you're putting out. Yep. I put it in the description. So, so yeah. So, today's topic. Um, well. Yeah. As I kind of mentioned when we were talking about Twitter. Right. My first tweet being about watching the old school 90210. Yeah. We're talking about 90210 and Luke Perry. Right. Because, sadly, he's no longer with us. Right. And that has had a effect on a lot of us so many of us so So many we asked for some stories some memories um regarding you know luke perry his career 90210 right i started some good ones i started watching the seasons over again i started watching over again i haven't gotten that far into it but i have watched a few episodes and it is crazy yeah like they covered a lot of height, like a lot of topics. They did. Like in the first season, they covered AIDS, they covered rape, they covered drug abuse, they covered alcohol addiction. Yeah. Shoplifting. Yeah. That was like a big thing on like those shows back then. Um, Somebody wanting to murder their parents. Matthew Perry. But he didn't actually. He wanted to kill himself. Yet. Spoiler alert if yet. you haven't watched that episode, but it's been like I watched it 20 like 20 years, almost, so 30 years. So uh, yeah, I was gonna say I watched <laughs> it almost 30 years ago. <laughs> right. <laughs> but oh my gosh. And you know what I realized watching 90210? What's that? Kelly was not a good friend. No. She was a shitty friend. She was a Let's shitty friend. Let's just be friend. honest. She was a really shitty friend. And I'm friend. sorry if I'm hurting anybody's feelings here. But let's just but let me just follow that with I didn't really like Brenda in the second season. <laughs> I didn't either. Once the second season came, I'm like, I get so mad at Brenda. And I really liked her in like the first season. Right. I really liked her. And then just the the way she she's over. She was over dramatic. It's like, girl, I know you thought you were pregnant, but you're not. So she say la vie. So (laughs) over dramatic. And like we kind of talked about this, too, a little bit like before. Yeah. But yeah, like I never really liked Kelly mm-hmm. and I, I got to where I didn't really like Brenda. Right. And like, I when really Brenda like was gone. And then it was just Kelly. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, what? Why am I watching? Why this? am I here? Right. Right. But, but I always liked Donna. I did, too. And I, I always liked David. I, me, too. And I like Brandon. And I always thought Steve Sanders was the cutest one. Really? I did. That's right. You've said that before. I always thought Steve Sanders was really cute. See, he had I, a nice smile. I was a Luke Perry kind of girl because type. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say that the episode, the most recent one I watched, his outfit. Yeah. I was like, man, why are you wearing your jammies to school? He was wearing like these oh, those, billily those... pajama pant looking things. Yes. And like a white t-shirt. I'm like, those look like pajamas. Oh, the first episode he was introduced, he was wearing overalls, but one overall down and a leather jacket. And it was cool. <laughs> like, that was cool. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Walking down that hotel hallway. Oh, yeah. He was hey, looking hey, fly. hey. He was looking good. I own this place. And I liked Brandon's mullet. I'm just going to say it. I didn't. I, I felt like it was of the of the. Of well, the it time. was when it started. I was just like, would you please cut it? Because I liked his hair. I liked. But like. Somebody has said they copy New Kids on the Block. I did it again. New Kids on the Block. I'm always going to do it. So so that's just that. Yeah. Um. Well, I don't know if I would say they copied them so much as it's just the, that was the fashion. That was the style. Like That was the style. Yeah. Like, think about the New Kids on the Block cartoon. Yeah. Like, those guys, you could have called it 90210 cartoon. You could have. You could have. And they kind of look the same. They Yeah. You just need a different voices. Right. Right. And storyline. Exactly. <laughs> but they all, like, they had that, like, hair. and Yeah. I liked it. Me too. But I liked the mullet, too. <clears throat> I wasn't mad at it. So Steve Sanders was your favorite. And David. I liked them both, like, at differing times. Dylan McKay was my favorite. Oh, man. Ooh. Woo. Woo. Woo-wee. Yeah. <laughs> Just his voice. I really like the way he talked. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I loved it so much. And I loved him on Riverdale. 
Because I was I've like, I've never seen Riverdale. Oh man, you're still hot. Holy cow! I've never seen Riverdale. Oh, it's really good. You would really like it. Really? Yeah. It's sad. I, I watch thought it. About watching I watch it, it with Bren. Oh, really? Yeah. So she it's really like, likes it. Wow. It's it's like 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 mature kids, right? They like I mean preteens. Yeah, I, like teenagers. Like oh, okay. They Bren's they cover some. Bad. They cover some racy stuff. Yeah. Like what? Well, like they're having sex who the kids yeah what oh yeah oh yeah yep well 90210 uh, exactly i mean it's just like that so it's like i watched that when i was 10 it's it's gonna happen so so i mean yeah you know yeah yeah i didn't watch it with my mom though well <laughs> we're really open we have a really really like no that's good it's that's like good. not embar- it's not embarrassing for her because we that's wonderful it, it really is like we it's just, <laughs> it's not it's i think it's more awkward for me than it is for that's her. what i'm talking about like i think it's more I would be like, like whereas 90210 i'd get i'd get like he bejeebed out i would never with my mom if my mom was watching it because i was like it's funny because like i would feel like that too but I used to watch Designing Women with my mom. Yeah, but that was... But they would talk... But I think it went over our heads. Yeah. Yeah. I think it went right. over our heads. I think even right. 90210 a bit went over my head. Oh, me too. Like, I'm sure it did. I had to have. I didn't realize all of that. Would ha- like, the shoplifting one I remembered. Yeah, like yeah. I re- Because, I mean, that was something, you know, kids were doing when we were that age. Like, right. So hot topics that they covered. Is- that, yeah oh yeah we had to like topics. we had we had some conversations there in the background right so we just here we are back again here we are who is this episode brought to us by this episode is brought to you by amy amy diana diana and jenny l jenny l you know what you did thanks ladies thanks ladies um there was something i was going to say before we just did that Oh, oh, we sorry. have some text messages that oh, nice. I should probably read before we get into our stories. So I'm just going to do that. Great. Hello from Wisconsin. I've been wanting. Did I read this one already? I may have read it. Let's just read it anyway. Like I may have read it in the thing, which is why it sounds familiar. But OK, so if, go for it. if this isn't new. Sorry. sorry hello from wisconsin i've been wanting to text that since you mentioned it on the podcast thanks for the lucky song drop on the recent episode i totally forgot about it i was belting it out along with you like it was the year 2000 and i was driving my black dodge neon home from college have a great weekend ladies leanne hughes pritz pritz laugh i think oh hey hey thanks leanne i like the uh black dodge neon yeah that car early morning she, she wakes, wakes up, up. <laughs> <laughs> that car was a popular one back yeah in the remember day. gary had one he did he had, a, he had a she said black right yeah he had a black dodge neon hey he had that thing forever did he really yes. i don't remember i only ever saw him at the airport yep do you want to read the next one or do you want me to keep reading him you keep reading because i don't have mine. okay Here's the next one. I am loving the song The Way. When I first heard that one in particular, it blew my mind and I started having thoughts and images going through my head. Hey. Hey. It is a great roller skating song. (laughs) It is. It is a great roller skating song. Every time I, like, it starts, I just think about, like, roller skating. You know, you know, like. You want to do a little shuffle. Yes. (laughs) Like. Round in the corner. Yes. Yes. Crossing. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So this one is, hey, ladies, just listen to step 116 and just wanted to say, I'll never get tired of the podcast. Oh, thank you. I love you. I just wish I lived closer and could meet some of you Northeast ladies at your get togethers. Christy. We love you, Christy. We love you, too. Thank you. The last one. Um. I love you guys. My name is Margaret and I am from West Virginia. I love the new kids on the block. They are my happy place. When I listen to your podcast, I relive my childhood. So thank you. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you for listening. 
So if you would like to send us a text message, we would or or you can leave a message. Right. Um, you can do so by calling our party line at 857-271-1047. Once again, that's 857-271-1047. I've memorized the number finally. Well, I thought I had it right here. Oh, right. Yep. Here we go. 857-271-1047. Okay, cool. That's it. Okay. So shall we get into our stories? New kids on the block. Let's, Let's rock. rock. It's not the block party. But. No, it's not. But I've had that in my head since we recorded a couple nights I ago. I wish that they did a guest spot. Who? New kids on the block. A guest spot? On 90210. Oh, yeah. I thought you meant on our podcast. <laughs> All right. Do you want... Well, we got some stuff to read. Yeah. So want me to read the first one? Yeah. I'd be happy to. Go this for is uh, 90210 comments from Christina. Hi, Brooke and Nikki. I am so glad that you were doing a 90210 episode. I still can't believe that Luke Perry is gone. I remember when 90210 first aired. I was so excited to see the show. I would watch it on the TV in our basement because my mom and older sister were not interested. Aww. I remember being on the phone with my best friend while we watched 90210 episodes together. We would talk about the episode during commercials. Oh, that's that's really cool. That is cool. I always thought it was so cool that 90210 addressed real issues like gun safety, date rape, drug abuse. Yeah. I remember when David's friend, Scott, accidentally shot himself. You didn't see things like that on teen shows until 90210. Mm -hmm. I also remember waiting with bated breath to see if and when Brenda and Dylan would have sex. Yes. And who could forget <clears throat> Donna Martin graduates? I could never forget <laughs> Donna Martin graduates. Uh, from the guitar riff and the theme song to the peach pit to cool musical guests like Jeremy Jordan, Color Me Bad, and Monica... To Dylan and Brandon's amazing hair. Oh, and boy, did they have amazing hair. 90210 will always hold a special place in my heart. Here's to our favorite zip code, Christina Meyer. That is so well written. That is so well. She's awesome. Christina, I, you're awesome. And I just want to say that, like, I've watched season two on Hulu and that episode's missing. I think. Really? Yeah. The one where Scott shoots accidentally himself. shoots himself. Right. I don't believe it's it's on Hulu because I've like gone midway through the season and, or unless I skipped over it accidentally. I don't think it's there. They probably don't. Maybe they didn't want to show it. Oh, yeah. for controversial reasons. Maybe. I don't know. <clears throat> but we talked about that. Yes. Yes. And because we had been talking before. Right. About how much we liked him. Right. And we liked his character. I loved his character. And I was I always thought that they wrote him off the show. And right. I was upset about it because when I was little, I loved his character and I thought he was so cute. He was cute. Yeah. So then I was just snooping around on the Internet and found out that they he wanted off the show. Like Isn't He didn't crazy? want to be on the show anymore because he was all set with acting. He didn't want to be an actor anymore so that they wrote the episode for him. And that was a way that, you know, they let him out of his contract or whatever, which and they was cool. And of they them. covered a great topic. Very, very good topic. So a sad topic, nonetheless. Very. But. but that that was good because Nikki was like, I'm really upset that they that they wrote him off the show. <laughs> that was I was really mad. <laughs> but it turns out that's what he wanted. So that was good. But yeah. or good for him. There's like certain things in my mind that affect me and I've told you this that like I have this thought of like what happened but maybe it didn't actually happen that way but in my head like that's the way it happened yeah and I have like anger towards it yeah maybe not anger is a strong word but like I'm irritated yeah. about it and like that is one thing that's I one was of those irritated things. that they wrote him off because I really liked him but they didn't that's actually so wrote him off so now I can get over that in my life. That's One right. down, 3,474 <laughs> to go. <laughs> okay, so the next one's from Courtney, and these are Courtney's thoughts on Beverly Hills 90210 nearly 30 years later. Hey, Brooke and Nikki, just wanted to send in some thoughts about rewatching 90210 almost 30 years after it originally aired. After Luke Perry's passing, I wanted to start the series over from the beginning again, as I haven't watched it since it went off fx back in the mid 2000s i have to say luke perry is the first actor that has passed that i was truly heartbroken about 
Yes, I have cried as we lost him far too soon. His character of Dylan McKay was the token bad boy that us ladies, that generation, all loved. And I think most of us wanted to be Brenda Walsh so that we could say he was our boyfriend. Can I get a hell yeah? Hell yeah. <laughs> well, there have been other actors that I was sad about. Patrick Swayze, for example. Oh, yeah. So sad. Luke was part of a show that was part of my formative years. I was 14 years old in October 1990 when 90210 premiered. When this final episode aired in May of 2000, I was 23. Wow. This show was part of my life from eighth grade through the time when I moved away from home. Here are a few things that rewatching the show has reminded me of. As I'm writing this, I am up to season three, episode 10. So here's one. Luke Perry tried out for the role of Steve Sanders and didn't get it. I'm not sure if Dylan McKay was originally a character the producers had in mind since he wasn't in the pilot episode. I agree with this because he was kind of just kind of like placed in like... He was only supposed to be there for like one or two episodes. And then they liked him. I read this like, on, oh, on the interwebs. You did? Yeah. Very cool. There have been several actors I've seen again that seem to have gotten their start in 90210. Matthew Perry, he played Roger Azarian in season one, the tennis star, the one I just talked about. That um, you thought he was going to kill his father. But actually. But actually he wanted to kill himself. And Brandon sent him straight and got him on the road to wellness. Because Brandon. He's a national treasure. He's a he's a good dude. We don't throw that around very often. No, Brandon Walsh, Brandon Walsh, truly. Brandon Walsh had some morals, man. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he may have had the, maybe had the occasional misstep and maybe drove intoxicated. But he made it right. He sure did. He sure did. By the way, that was very quickly that like all of a sudden he got a DUI and then he had his license again. Like watching them back to back. I was like, wait a second. Isn't he not supposed to have his license? Wait one minute. It's been three months. What? <laughs> James Pickens Jr. He's now on Grey's Anatomy as Dr. Weber. On 90210, he played Henry Thomas, the manager of Beverly Hills Beach Club. I knew he looked familiar and I don't, I don't watch Grey's Anatomy but I think I've seen clips yeah ah, he liked the young and the restless he would watch it that was like don't no one bother me during young and the restless I'm not there yet um and Dean Kane I you, do remember Dean Kane, Dean Kane from that man he played Rick the guy Brenda met in Paris ooh, ooh la la yeah Dean Kane I do remember that mm-hmm since I'm rewatching on Hulu, they don't seem to carry every episode, which is a bummer. I did catch that they missed season two, episode 14, the one in which David's friend Scott dies. Wow. So, but here's the thing. Like, Scott hasn't appeared at all in the episodes that I've watched on season two. Really? So they waited that long? That's kind of crazy. Huh. No, I haven't seen him. Because I haven't gotten to episode 14 yet. Oh. But I'm now finding out I'm not going to be able to see it because right. it's not on there. Right. The other episode was season two, episode 18, the one where Steve goes to New Mexico to search for his birth parents. I'm sure there are more, but I may not have gotten to them yet. That's so weird. That is weird. I wonder if it might have something to do with, like, licensing or something. I wonder or... where I can watch them. If you guys know, let me know. I would like to watch them. Maybe I can buy them. I was going to say, maybe you could probably buy them. I would do On, that. like, iTunes? Yeah. Maybe. Uh, Beverly Hills 90210 was the first teen drama of our generation that dealt with so many issues that young people have to deal with and make sense of in their own lives. The ones that come to mind are race relations, divorce, drug, alcohol abuse, depression, cancer, runaways, death, sex, and pregnancy. While I necessarily didn't deal with all of these at 14 years old in my own life, I can remember thinking at the time that I was glad there was a TV show out there that wasn't shying away from the issues we all might deal with at some point in our life. The gang did go through junior year twice. (laughs) I did not know this. And like we were talking about it in our little group thing. And I did not know that they went through junior year twice. 
I believe I heard on a behind the scenes of some interview with producers at some point that they decided they wanted them to stay in high school another year because the first season didn't have very high ratings and they didn't want the gang going off to college too soon, which I think was a good call. Yeah. Oh, I agree. When I restarted watching last week and the first time Luke appeared on screen in episode two, I bawled like a baby and I got teary eyed seeing him within each scene. Now three seasons in, I smile at seeing him on screen, and it brings me some joy that these episodes are there for fans to enjoy. Thanks for reading. Love you, girls. Courtney. Thank you, Courtney. Those were some really good... There was some yeah. really good, like, highlights and and um, thoughts. Yeah. So um, I read this article, and I posted it, actually, on my Facebook and it is from the Today Show, and it's called How Luke Perry's Death is a Wake-Up Call for Generation X. Now, we're not really Generation X, and we're not millennials. We're in that, like, weird right. middle ground, whatever. Right. But um, it hit the nail on the head for me because... Yes, I read that. Like, I've had a lot of death that's been happening, like, around me and, yep. like, around my inner circle. And um, so that was lingering. And then all of a sudden, Luke Perry dies. And I think it's like the first time we realize, like, oh, my God, we're like nearing old age. Like, we aren't young anymore. And that sucked. Yeah. That sucked. Th- 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 I mean, I couldn't understand. I don't want to come off as heartless, but I couldn't understand why I was taking his death. So, like, I cried. And I'm, like, on the verge of crying right now. It's because of this. Like, because yeah. I'm like, I liked Luke Perry and I liked the show and don't like, yeah. I'm not, don't like consider me heartless, but I was like, why am I crying? I get it. Do you know what I'm saying? I get it because I know exactly what you're saying. Be- I, I told, like, I, I can't explain it, but I get it. Like my husband, when someone dies, for whatever reason, like to him, I don't, and this is going to make me sound heartless, but he'll be like, oh, did you hear such so-and-so died? Mm-hmm. And he's very, like, sad about it. And, mm-hmm. like, you can tell, like, he feels emotion about it. Right. And I'm like, oh, that actor in that movie from that I've never seen. And how old was he? That's always what I say. How, how old was he? Mm-hmm. He was 87. Oh. oh, wow. They lived a great life. He lived a nice long life. Mm-hmm. You know, lucky for him and his family that they were together that long. And I have to be nice, but I'm like, and it's not that I don't care. It's like, I have no emotion to it. I don't right. know this person. Right. So I know exactly what you're saying. Because yeah. you you kind of feel like that. Like we're on the road now to people passing away. Right. Like that should be how you feel. But like you don't because this is real. Right. This is somebody that like we watched as kids, teenagers. Yeah. And that he we was just thought was going to like watching Riverdale. Like I was like so excited. He's in Riverdale. You know, like you don't think all of a sudden they're going to be gone. Like, right. I guess. I guess it was a wake up call. Really, like just what the article says, like it was a wake up call, like knock, knock, knock. And it wasn't ticking. like he died of like other actors, like an accident or right accident or like an overdose. He died of a or, like, stroke and he right. was a healthy guy right from what i've heard like the guy went and like built stuff and like was an outdoor type of guy like a man's man and he had a stroke like that happens to old people scares the hell out of me and i said kevin you better freaking go and make an appointment to the doctor now like i was pissed and i was like in tears (laughs) because it is it's a wake-up call like i don't want to lose him and i don't want to and i i'm I set myself like, straight. I don't want to die. I don't want to have a stroke. No. So, so yeah, no, I, I, I totally get, like, I get it. Just hit home too And close. I think a lot of us get it. Yeah. I think so, too. I think, I mean. Like, when he had the stroke, I was scared. I don't know if you remember me, mention, like, if you remember me saying that in the, yeah. in our little chat thing. But I was scared because when I hear stroke, I think of my great uncle. And he had a stroke. Mm-hmm. He didn't die from it, but he was never the same. No, he was. I mean, he he really. It's all I ever knew him as. Mm-hmm. Like in a wheelchair, couldn't talk, couldn't yeah. feed himself. Right. You know, but he was my uncle, and like my aunt was, you know, took care of him. And, right. Um, that's what I thought was going to happen to Luke Perry. That's what I thought too. 
that would be the worst that would happen. Mm -hmm. I didn't think he'd die. Right. No, same. Because I thought I heard, like, because there were, obviously, Hollywood was bustling with rumors. Right. I heard he woke up. So I was like, oh, sign of relief. Good. He's on the road to recovery. Maybe there'll be some little damage, but... And then that hit me like a ton of bricks. I had to take a moment. Yeah. Like when Donnie Wahlberg, and this is how I found out, Donnie Wahlberg tweeted a picture of him and Luke Perry. Yeah. And sa- and I was like, what? That's how you found out that he died? I think so. Oh. I was at work. And I, and I came up on my phone, like news, like a CNN thing. That's how I found out. But yeah i think i think that's how i found out like because i well donnie did tweet something yeah you found out after i did because i had been at, sitting at work and i had read it and you texted me a while later mm-hmm. and you said and it was like luke perry died yeah so it could have been donnie's tweet because yeah. you know because i was like face down in work yeah that yeah, day. yeah yeah that was like a really tough day for me because i remember when i saw that i was like oh my gosh like you didn't like i i remember thinking like you didn't know like she didn't know because that was the day i was messaging you that like things i wasn't having a good day yes yes and then that happened and i just lost my yes. marbles yes that's exactly what day it was because you were like i remember the text messages you were like you should say something and you know and then yeah. all of a sudden it was like luke perry died and because I kept talking about it with Kevin. I could see on his face. He was like, why do you keep talking about this? About Luke Perry? Yeah. Like, you've never mentioned him before. You know? Right. Like, right. He never said I never mentioned it before. Because I had mentioned him because we watch Riverdale. And I'm like, oh, my sure, God, sure, Luke sure, Perry. Sure, sure, sure. You know? Like. But, like, why is this so affecting hot. you? Right. It's not That's like why. he's, like, your best friend. <laughs> right. You know? But. But still. It did. It affected me. And. And I think once I explained it to him, it affected him too. Yeah. That's really young to have a stroke. It is. and But it ha- I mean, from what I've read after all this, like, there are people that have strokes when they're two. Like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, people have them. Yeah. It just doesn't seem like, like, I didn't think he'd die from it. Right. Right. And it's just really hard and really sad. Mm. It really is. Anyway. Ugh man so i'll read okay. the next one from jill this is a great one this i mean not that and these are all great but this one like i ended up finding a video because yeah. i just watched the video so i haven't watched the video yet but i'm gonna read the story okay. and then the video is on our website right so this is luke perry at the mall from jill from the beginning i was all in on beverly hills 90210 I looked forward to Thursday each week to watch the new episode to see what they were wearing, hear new music, and catch up on the storylines. I loved it. I was attached to the show and invested in all the characters. In the summer of 1991, when we were all trying to decide if we were Team Dylan and Brenda or Team Dylan and Kelly, I heard on the local radio station that Luke Perry was coming to the Plantation Fashion Mall, (laughs) which was about 20 minutes away from where I lived. I begged my mom and dad to take me there. Thankfully, my parents were pretty cool and gave in to my pleas. My mom took me, my best friend, and her sister to the mall to try to get a glimpse of Dylan McKay, and maybe if we were lucky, even get up close and personal. When we got to the mall, we were pretty surprised by the number of cars there. There was a lot of people. We made our way to the center of the mall, where he was going to make his appearance. We couldn't get close to where he would be on the first floor or the second floor, so we went up to the third floor in hopes that we could see him from up there. (laughs) Tons of teenage girls and their parents were packed into that mall. When Luke came out on the stage, girls went crazy. There was a lot of screaming and pushing. Several people were injured. I think Luke was on the stage for maybe a minute before security rushed him off and they canceled the event. Wow. They closed the mall and we all made our way to our cars and headed home. I think it, I think it took us over an hour to get out of the parking lot. The event was covered by national news outlets. If I remember correctly, I think Luke even talked about it on the Arsenio Hall show. It was later reported that there were over 10,000 people there, and thankfully, there were no serious injuries. We didn't get to meet him, and we barely saw him, but it's a memory I will have forever. Here's a couple links to some of the news stories, and we'll have the links on our website. Yep, they'll be right on our website. Obviously, for many of us who were in our teens in the 90s, Luke's passing was difficult. It really hit me hard. I love that show so much. 
It was a part of my life throughout middle school, high school, and college. I was ultimately a David Silver girl. <laughs> Woo, he made me swoon. <laughs> but Dylan was a close second for me. It broke my heart when I heard news about him. He seemed like such a sweet gentleman. He will be missed. And then there's a video. Right. And it's actually them when they were older. And it's Luke Perry and Jason Priestley. And they're talking. It's on E.T. Right. And there's a um, video on our website. And that may be the mall incident that he was talking about. Because he was like, they never let us go back to a mall again. (laughs) And, um, And Jill watched it. And she said she's pretty sure that this is the incident. That's awesome. So. Thank you so much, Joe, for thank sharing you, Joe. that story. And I don't know if we thanked, Cor- yeah, we thanked Courtney. I know, I remember thanking. We Courtney. thanked Christina. Oh yeah. Okay. Just want to make sure we thank our our write-ins, our submitters. All right, Angela's nine hundred two one zero story. Hey, Brooke and Nikki, I'm Mandy's younger sister, Angela. Angela, hey! yay! I heard you guys were looking for stories about Luke Perry, so I wanted to share mine with you. Growing up with a sister who's 14 years older than me, I was constantly exposed to things that most people my age didn't care about or know about. Beverly Hills 90210 was one of those things. I would watch episodes with her here and there when I was young, but it wasn't until middle school that I took the liberty to take her DVDs and watch them by myself. I love everything about the show, but I loved Luke Perry most of all. He was my first non-gay crush. Lance Bass was my first crush and holds a special place in my heart. Angela, <laughs> we are like, Angela, I love you. We met Angela in yes, Miami. Um, I remember honestly thinking that I was going to grow up and marry Luke. And the fact that no other nine-year-olds even knew who he was made me think I had a good shot. <laughs> That's I love it. awesome. Dylan and Brenda were my favorite couple of all time. So I would constantly watch their episodes on repeat. I can literally quote the episode of their first date. Isn't it romantic? Word for word. I love hearing stories of how kind and thoughtful of a person Luke Perry was. My favorite one was the one Colin Hanks posted about him on Instagram. And if you guys haven't read it yet, I encourage you to. Oh my gosh, that just gave me goosebumps. Have you heard that one? No. Where he saw him on a plane and he kept balloons in his pocket. To like, because this kid was like, oh, really, really upset. And so Luke said he always kept balloons in his pocket because he blew it up and like instantly the kid was. It would like okay. make them. He's like, that's why I always I'm have to go and read it. In my pocket. I cried. I was emotional. I was a. Yeah. Um, Luke can bring a smile to anyone's face. And he definitely brought one to mine and my sister's. Even though Mandy is Team Dylan and Kelly, what? I will always be thankful. <laughs> <laughs> what, Mandy? I will always be thankful to her for bringing 90210 in my life. You ladies are amazing, and let's daydream about riding in Dylan McKay's Porsche. Love, Angela. Oh, oh Angela, thank you. Thank That's you. such a cool story because she's 14 years younger than us. Right. So cool. So she, what? I mean, it's like a different. It's a, to- it's a different generation. Really? Almost, yeah. Almost. Yeah. So That's, cool. That is cool. And I totally get what she's saying about, like, because no other nine-year-olds knew who he was. Right. That would have been my thinking when I was that age. Me too. That's why Joey McIntyre, oh, he's how old? Well, I guess he's the one I'm going to like. <laughs> <laughs> I have my best chances with that one. <laughs> All right. I have Stephanie's Luke Perry tribute. R.I.P. Luke Perry. In seventh grade, most of my NKO TV posters were slowly replaced by 90210 posters. I watched every single episode of all 10 seasons from middle school through college. I rewatched countless rerun episodes on FX when I was in college, sometimes all of four episodes per day that would air. Aww. I cried when the series finale aired, knowing how much I would miss finding out what was happening in the lives of my favorite TV characters each week. It was a commercial break on a 90210 rerun on FX. That led me to flip channels on that Tuesday morning in September, only to discover there had been a plane crash at the World Trade Center and then watch the plane hit Tower 2 live. When FX no longer aired reruns, I found them on SoapNet and my TV friends from Beverly Hills kept me company when I was home on maternity leave during the first few exhausting months of motherhood. When SoapNet was no longer, I then found 90210 reruns on Pop TV. That led me to Rock This Boat Season 2 and the realization that regular people just like me can and do 
go on that NKOTB cruise that I always thought sounded so amazing, but never thought it was possible. Stepping on that boat for Cruise 10 a couple years later was a big full circle moment that may never have happened if not for the never-ending need to watch reruns of 90210. So many big moments in the past 30 years of my life have included my all-time favorite show. It's heartbreaking to know a member of that amazing cast is no longer with us. Can't believe he's gone. R.I.P. Luke, you will always be our Dylan. That, like, that got me. So I... This was on Facebook. So, okay, SoapNet. I loved SoapNet because I could watch 90210 and Melrose Place. Yeah. And I didn't, like, watch it regularly. Because it, it was, was nice to turn it on every once in a it while. It was nice to know I could turn it on and find an old friend. Yep. And I'd watch whatever it was, whatever episode, mm-hmm. you know, wherever in the series. Um, or and, and or Melrose Place. I only like the Andrew Shoe episodes of Melrose Place. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hate me. Don't hate me. But, um, so that, that makes me smile. Very awesome. And it also makes me smile that you that's how you found Rock This Boat. Yeah. I mean, it's so many important, like, milestones in her life. Absolutely. So that was really cool. Thank you so much for sharing that. So these are Melissa's 90210 memories. And, Le- and uh, Melissa posted these on Facebook. I asked for 90210 memories from people and to send them in. And this one came in. And um, this one, she says, my aunt baked me a cake for the last episode, all chocolate because I was in mourning. <laughs> I texted her last week that I needed another one. Oh, it says bye 90210. And she meant like the last week because that's when Luke Perry died. Right. And then Aww. she said, um, NKOTB Cruise 2012 90s night. I dressed as Brenda and made a life size cardboard cutout of Dylan and walked around with him all night. You are amazing. So she really does look like Brenda. She does. And that's amazing. That is amazing. So these are kind of like pick a picks in yeah, a way. Yeah. So and go I love to our it. website and you, you can guys got to go pictures. and look at it because she's amazing. She like honestly looks just like Brenda. I love it so much. And she also has like a bunch of 90210 stuff. Like she's like she has like memorabilia. That's so cool. I have some 90210 stuff. That's so stuff. cool. I remember when I posted I went to that antique mall. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I came home with Dylan McKay. That's right. <laughs> And then I got Brenda and Brandon. So I was at a flea market last summer and they had a bunch of the dolls. But they were not in good shape. Like the boxes were not in good shape. Yeah. And they looked like they were kind of melty. Oh. So I didn't I didn't partake in any shopping of yep. them. But it was neat to see. The ones that I have look like they just came off the shelf. That's wonderful. Like not the Dylan McKay one, but the yeah. I think I have I think I have Brenda Kelly and Brandon. I think I have all of them. And they're in pristine condition. Pristine. Yeah. So, um thank you Melissa. Thank you Melissa. And thank you Stephanie. I think we said thank you Stephanie, but thank you Stephanie. Thank you Stephanie. Um this next one is from Leanne. This is also a picture on our website. Mm-hmm. Uh I took this picture from my senior yearbook. It was from a flashback section. This is a picture of me and some of my posse hanging out in my bedroom in eighth grade. We totally thought we were the middle school version of the 90210 clip. (laughs) That's awesome. Notice how the flash from the camera shined over Luke Perry's image in the poster in the background. Too bright for this world. R.I.P. Oh. Oh. Um, And for the record, I would say you were like the 90210 clip. Yeah, I would say so too. So cool. And I'm trying to figure out. Is that a dinosaur? That's what I'm trying to figure <laughs> out. Like, it was, is that like a salamander? I don't know. You'll is have to tell like us. Is it like a toy? Is it like a piece of bread? I'm not sure. I don't know. She's going to have to update us. Leanne? Yeah. What is that? Yeah. Thank you for sharing. But thank you so much for sharing. We love it. All right. These are Kelly's 90210 memories. Hey, ladies. I don't have the best story. It's really just the memories that the show has given me. My younger brother and I are only 11 months apart, Irish twins, if you will. But this was a show that we always watched together. I will never forget watching the last episode with him. I don't remember much about how we reacted to it, but I know that I enjoyed spending that time with my brother. The day that Luke passed away, a piece of my heart left with him. He will forever be part of my childhood. Side story, my mother, her name is Brenda. My dad, other than being known as Santa Claus, he is mainly called David. 
The younger brother, Brandon, my older brother, his name is Chad, but he's blonde and was basically our Steve. I always like to refer to our names, the 90210 character names. <laughs> XO. Thank you, Kelly. Thanks, Kelly. Love you. Those were some great stories that, that was we awesome. were sent. That was awesome. Amazing. Pictures, videos on our site. Yeah. So go check them out. I hope that we got all of our stories. I'm sorry if we missed yours. And if we did, we'll make sure that we read it on the next podcast. Yeah. Episode. We'll read it on so. the ne- on our next um like 80s 90s yeah so yeah thank you so much everyone thank for you. who submitted stories and memories and pictures and thanks for listening yeah luke perry we miss you he was a national treasure he really was and we'll always remember you yep oh gosh that's sad mm-hmm. that's so sad it is but uh we did had some fun reminiscing and talking about 90210 and Yep. We I'm sure did. we'll have another episode to talk more about 90210. Yep. As the years, you know, later, as it gets, you know, further into the seasons. Yeah. Yeah. There'll be some more stuff that comes up. Yep. That we'll want to hash out. That's right. So. And we can talk about Luke Perry again. Yeah. Forever and always, because, you know. Why not? Hashtag National Treasure. Yep. So, thank you so much for listening. Thank you. We appreciate you. We appreciate you so much. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye.